<laughs> Let's go ahead and do it. Oh, wow. Hey, everybody. It's Anna. Welcome back to my Fluid Art channel. Thank you so much for being here. So today I'm doing another spinning painting because it's still January, so I'm doing another pour on a spinner. And if you saw my video last week, you saw I did a spinning ribbon pour where while the canvas was spinning, I poured the paint on to make this cool whirlpool effect. And that was really neat. And as I was doing it, I started getting these ideas of other things that I could do of pouring the paint on while spinning it. So that's what I'm doing today. So I've got the same colors as last week, got my leftovers, but then I've added four more colors because I want this one to be much more diverse in terms of its color palette, to have different designs going through that are different colors. What I'm inspired by is the little uh, kid's toy spirograph, you know, where you've got like the little toothed wheels and you like make circular patterns with a pen or something. That's what I want to try because as this is spinning, what I did before is I just moved from outwards to inwards and that made a beautiful spiral. That was great. But what I want to do today is to experiment with different hand movements. For example, if you go in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, while the canvas is spinning, that's going to make a different effect. What if you go in, you know, what if you do this while the canvas is spinning? It's going to make a different design. So I'm going to try all kinds of things. It's probably going to end up really wacky and crazy and chaotic, and I can't wait. Let me just say, this is a repurposed canvas. This was one that I got from a local, like, dollar store kind of place. Uh, and it was on sale, and so I put some gesso on it, and then I added some spray primer also. Um, so this is this can be a good way of getting larger canvases at a discount. The problem is it's a little slack in the middle, and it's harder to tighten it up because it's not the same as a regular canvas. So I don't I don't do this as much as I used to. But if you're just starting out and you want to try something on a big canvas, but you don't want to spend a ton of money, sometimes you can pick these up for two or three, five bucks uh, on sale or on clearance somewhere. So that's what I'm pouring on. I've got white base paint. I've got my colors. In terms of the paint consistency, all of my paints are mixed with American Floetrol and water. And so this, I would call this like a medium. Do you see how it makes a mound, but it's like a soft mound? So as it flows out, it's not a really defined stream. So it's it's thickish, but it's not really thick. I call this medium. It's not as thick as a bloom pour, uh, but it is a little bit thicker than some other pours. It's definitely thicker than a Dutch pour. I have some paper cups. I think that's all my details. Let's make a painting. So I'm going to start by pouring the base coat out on the canvas and spreading that out. What I did last time worked pretty well, which is cover the entire top and also cover like the corners of the sides, but not necessarily the entire sides because I'm going to be spinning a lot and so the paint will stretch itself out. So spread it out as smoothly as you can because this paint is a little thicker than a normal base coat. It's going to look pretty uneven, but as we spin it, it's going to even itself out. Okay, let me just make sure that I get these corners covered. Okay, that's looking good. I'm going to give it a quick torch to pop some of these air bubbles. So now 
to just help it spread out and even itself out before I even start pouring the paint, I'm going to give it a bit of a spin. So you can see we have some ridges forming here where the paint was heavier. And so as it spins, it pushes and it moves. So I'm just going to try to even out those ridges a little bit. Just break them up. So that once we have a design on there, it's not going to get warped by the paint spreading unevenly. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to layer three different cups with three different color schemes. And then I'm going to use a different color scheme for each uh, pattern of ribbon pour. So I think I'm going to have like my, the pink and the yellow. Those are going to be in one cup for sure. Um, maybe with the ultramarine blue because that's kind of a purplish tone. And then we'll have uh, some bright green. Yeah. Okay, so we've got, we, I have three little trios and each one I'll add some white to as well, just to help brighten it up. Um, so starting with our pink one, I'm just going to add small layers because I want each color to be visible as I pour it out. So this is a quinacridone rose and then lemon yellow and then some of my white and then ultramarine blue. And then some more quinacridone rose. And a little bit more of the yellow. And I think this is going to be enough because I don't think I need all that much paint per cup. So that's an interesting blend there. Next cup is going to be, this is a dark navy that I made from phthalo blue and some black. So it's kind of like a Prussian blue. And then some olive green and then metallic teal. And then some white. I absolutely love this dark navy when it blends with white. It makes this most amazing blue color. So having some white there next to it in the cup, whoops, uh, can help create that color blend even as I'm pouring it out. And even as I'm pouring it onto a white surface. Okay, there's that cup. Awesome. Okay, last cup, and that is the sort of bright, like planet Earth tones. So this is, I think, bright green. And cerulean blue. Metallic copper. some white, back to the green, okay so moving my colors aside I have three different layered cups and as I pour these out as a ribbon pour there's no silicone or anything uh, they're just gonna make these like striped streams of paint I feel like I could just experiment forever with these patterns. Um, I want to start by going like this, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. I think it's going to make this nice kind of like almost flower petal design. And it's possible that the lines will even be curved. So I don't know exactly how that's going to look. 
I think I'll do that with the, the pink one, the pink cup. And I might not go all the way to the middle. I may try to just do it sort of on the outer four to six inches of canvas and then have other designs that go through the middle. So it's like spirograph. Um, let's go ahead and do this. So I have this, the canvas is kind of off center of my spinner because the push pins that I have on the bottom of the canvas, they are uh, sort of gripping onto the side of the board. So that way when I spin it this way, it'll get held on. All right, I'm gonna spin, I'm gonna pour. You can pinch your cup to make a thin spout. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do it. Oh, wow. Okay, so I've got a big splotch here because uh, I started moving the cup before the paint started to flow, but it's really cool. I love it. We got some random kind of flecks of paint. That is so cool. It's very much like a pendulum pour, except you get to be the pendulum. So I love it. I love that flower petal kind of thing. Okay, uh, next one, next one. So I've thought about doing kind of lines like zoop, 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 straight across, and just, uh, you know, the line is gonna curve somewhat as it spins. I don't know exactly how it's gonna look. Um, and I've thought about, you know, coming in, like doing circles like this. How would that look? That's gonna make like little ovals. Whereas if it's, see, I'm like mapping it out in my head if I go this way, but if I go this way, that's gonna make more like circles. Oh, I like that. I like that idea. Okay, so I'm gonna do my brighter blue cup. Wish me luck. Okay, here I go. That's not working well. Wow. That looks awful. <laughs> I mean, it's quite fun. I don't... I don't think I had a very fine stream coming out of there. I think as I was moving it around, it was like dumping it out. So it's very interesting. It's not nearly as like defined as the flower petals for my next cup. I'm going to try long lines going all the way across. And we'll see how that goes. And possibly back and forth. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Oh, wow. Well, that is one of my favorites. These beautiful sweeping loops and going all over the place. Man, that's crazy. I wish I didn't have these giant blotches of the green. Even as it is, it's got this wacky playfulness, which I really like. Now, I've run out of my cups. I underestimated how much paint I was going to need for these. So let me think, because my middle is a little bit empty, and I don't know... I don't know if I want to try to do something in the middle. Because I could make a design. I could try to make like a little spiral right in the middle, and that would look pretty but it would cross over these, like everything's layered up nicely. And if I then put another design in the middle, it's then going to be on top of these other lines. And I don't want it to be on top because I really like them being on top of everything else. But I have a little bit of paint left over in my pink cup. And that's what's missing here in the middle. So I'm just going to put some little like drips of the pink here in the, in the middle. Okay, this is really cool. So now I'm just gonna spin it 
to try to get kind of the weight of the paint out of the middle of the canvas and off the edges a little bit. So let's spin. Beautiful. All right, so these big splotches are like moving off of the edge, which is kind of nice. I wonder if I should continue to spin it and get even more of it off now that there's no white in that corner. I think I will, just a little bit more. This is so fun. This is crazy. If you watch a lot of my channel, you know I'm very like, I think a lot about what I'm gonna do and I try to be very intentional about where I put the paint. This is wacky, but it's so fun. And I'm figuring out the kind of patterns that work well. The circular one, bleh, that didn't work. But the back and forth, excellent. The long lines back and forth, excellent. So I definitely would enjoy trying this again and maybe try some new motions to really get it exciting. Yeah. Uh, these pink spots, they don't have as much yellow in them as I would like. What I might try here is to add like a dot of white and then a dot of yellow. The white is to make the yellow stand out against the pink. Okay, and now I want to try like a little fingertip kiss. Okay, so that makes all the yellow go away. Oh, well, that's cool. So what I've done here is just kind of used my finger to add a little bit of yellow and white into the mix and then use your fingertip. It's like a little balloon kiss. As it presses and then comes up, it makes this little star point, almost like a little firework. So it's a great, great little tool to add some fun detail in something small. makes them look less like just pink blobs and more like something intentional. So I'm just getting some yellow and white paint to dip my finger into. Okay, yeah. That has more interest in it now. They look more like little flower petals or something. So I like that a lot. Oh man, this is really fun. Uh, I think I'm gonna call it quits here. Uh, I gotta like make sure my sides are covered, but then let me give you a close up. Okay, so this one is a total party. I think this is the way that I like to have it best. I think this is the most natural orientation for it. So these ribbons, they have such detail in them because they all have different colors. So they're all these different stripes. And if it's a really thin ribbon, it still has all the striping. If it's a really wide ribbon, it still has all the striping. So that's really cool. I love that I have three different colors of pour, which means as it's flowing across, each line is a different color scheme. And, and you may have, you know, this one is very similar to like these darker ones, but it comes from, well, no, actually that's just a different section of the cup. So we have thin streams with the lighter green. We've got thin streams with the darker cup. We have thin streams with the pink. 
So it's just really fun. And I do like the way those dots look with the little fingertip kisses in it to add some more yellow. Just makes them a little bit more interesting than they were before. Okay, I can't wait to see how this looks when the metallics are shimmery. So let me show you how this is when it's dry. Okay, it's all dry. So this dried really nicely. It didn't warp too much. So even though the canvas was kind of slack, I did prop it up a little bit in the middle. Um, but it wasn't a perfect propping up job, so I wondered if it would shift at all. I think these pink spots got just a little bit misshapen, but not too bad. Look how shiny those metallics are! I love that copper and the metallic teal and those nice thin stripes. This is such a wacky and fun design. My husband said it reminded him of spring, which the nice bright greens and the pinks and purples and stuff, I totally get that. So yeah, very cool. I do wish I didn't have these giant splotches, but it does make it interesting, so it's fun in its own way. But if I try it again, I'm going to be more careful about uh, doing controlled streams as I pour it out. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this experiment. I love how it turned out, and I will definitely be doing more of these in the future. So stay tuned! Let me know down in the comments, have you ever done something similar to this? And would you want to try after watching me do it? I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys!